today we are going to be making a recipe in the pressure cooker called Instant Pot Beef and Cheddar Ranch Potatoes. I do not have an Instant Pot, so I'm going to use my Faberware pressure cooker. So I have one pound of ground beef with one tablespoon of the ranch dressing mix, and I'm also going to throw in some pepper. I'm going to throw in some salt. And of course, y'all know I'm going to add in garlic and some onion powder. That's my go-to when I'm cooking ground beef. So I have this on the saute function. So we're going to brown this meat up um, until it's done, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, now we're going to add in one cup of beef broth, or if you prefer chicken, you can use chicken broth. And I didn't have any in a can, so I just took and boiled a cup of water and put in a beef bouillon cube. So we're going to stir that in there, and then we're going to add in our potatoes. Um, I chopped up about, I think it was six to eight medium-sized potatoes, and I chopped those up, and we're going to add those. And then we're gonna also take the rest of that ranch dressing seasoning packet. Should be a couple tablespoons if you're measuring it. Um, it would be two tablespoons, like if you have the containers of it. But I just have the package, so I put the remainder of the package in here also. And we're gonna stir it up. Okay, the next thing is we're gonna add in two teaspoons of chili powder so put that in there stir it up real good and then we're gonna put our lid on make sure that we have um, it sealed well and then we're gonna get this thing turned on and ready to go this recipe was for the instant pot and it says to put it on high pressure for five minutes but on mine I ended up putting it on the steak or meat function which is function number five and then I adjusted the time. The f I first had it on nine minutes and they were not, the potatoes were not done. So I ended up putting it on for five more minutes and then it ended up being done. So if, I, if you're doing it in a pressure cooker like mine, I would do it for maybe 15 minutes uh, and it should be done. So now that it's done, we put in a half a cup of shredded cheese and stir that in. And then it called for a half a cup of crumbled bacon. I didn't have any, but I did have a little bit of these real bacon pieces left. So I just stirred in what I had. I know it wasn't a half a cup, but that's what I stirred in. And then it's ready to serve up. We ended up making some croissants and some corn for our sides. Is it kind of plain? Yeah. It's good, but yeah, it could use a little more flavoring. So what are you adding to yours? More cheese and some more cheese hot and sauce. some Maria Sharp's habanero hot sauce. Habanero. Courtney had just some more cheese. I, I added some cheese and I no, it does not. I added cheese and sour cream. My husband already finished his. Was it good to you? He says Along yes, but he won't this. give me a thumbs up, so it doesn't receive a thumbs up. It, it, was, it was good. It was good. Okay. What about you? You actually said something. Was it Gina. good? <coughs> was it good, Gina? Adrian, was it good, baby? What? You you mean <laughs> Okie dokie, y'all. It was good. I thought it was good. And I don't have an instant pot. I just have the Faberware uh, pressure cooker. It ended up taking us probably about 15, 6, what was it? 9 minutes. Then we did it for 5. So 14 minutes total. We had to turn it back on for 5 more minutes. So. Hey y'all, tonight we're gonna make beef enchiladas. I'm starting out with one pound of ground beef and I have some chopped onions, probably about a quarter of a cup of diced up onions and we're gonna start browning this up. I'm also gonna add in my seasonings, which will be some salt and pepper. And I like to add in some garlic pepper, garlic pepper, garlic powder also. Mm -hmm. 
we're just going to let our meat continue to cook. Just break it up and let it brown. Okay, y'all, we're going to also get our sauce ready for our enchiladas. And I just used one can of cream of chicken soup along with a can of red enchilada sauce. Um, I just chose to get the old El Paso, the mild flavor. And we're gonna turn this on just kind of low and let it slowly warm up while we're cooking our meat. Hey y'all, something I forgot to tell y'all is I like to add a little bit of taco seasoning to the meat for my enchiladas. Um, I did this a little bit ago and I really like the way it tastes. I'm putting about two teaspoons of it just into the meat. Give it a, give it a little bit more flavor. This is gonna be our filling for our enchiladas. Sorry about the steam, but I'm gonna, I just wanted to tell y'all that. Got our meat done. Our um, sauce over here is just about um, warmed through. Just trying to get it to mix so there's not any lumps in it. So I'm going to let that warm a little bit longer and then we're going to start preparing the enchiladas. Okay y'all, I have a 9 by 13 inch baking pan. I'm going to go ahead and just spray a little bit of uh, vegetable oil or vegetable spray or non-stick cooking spray. There, let me get the words out. Okay, and we're going to start out getting our tortillas already. And today, I actually just microwave them. I have a little thing you can warm them in. And I wanted, I needed, I needed to get done quicker today. So, I'm gonna start out by putting some meat in there. And I don't really know how much. I just kind of eyeball what I think is a good amount. And then I just kind of roll it up and stick it over there in the corner. Some of the meat falls out, it's okay. And a lot of times I will heat these like in some, in a little skillet with some oil. And they are a little bit easier to work with that way, but it just takes so much time. And my husband and boys are needing to go help my mother-in-law with something and then they wanna go fishing. And so I need to get supper ready for them so that they can eat and go, go do their stuff. So I think it'll still be fine this way. I've had this thing forever. You just put your stuff in there and warm it. I use it a lot of times for um, flour tortillas. Um, I don't use them as much for corn, but today, like I said, I'm in a hurry, so we're doing it that way. But I bought that at like a grocery store when I lived in Oklahoma. Here is that cream of chicken and the red enchilada sauce that I warmed up together. And you can still see there's some of it that there might be a few little um, lumps in there, but it'll be fine because um, once it gets in the oven, it'll, it'll cook good. So I'm gonna actually use this little ladle to help kind of spread this over everything. And if you don't like cream of chicken, I know some people may not like it, you can use cream of mushroom, or something like that probably too. Probably would be real good with cream and mushroom if you like that. This is just how I was told to do it. And I don't remember, I think I got this from a cookbook I found at my mother-in-law's house. So it sounded really easy and I wrote it down and then we just have been using it for years now. And I think it was one of those like church cookbooks where people share their recipes, so. I'm not really sure who or where it came from. I bought some of this Fiesta Blend cheese, which is the Monterey Jack cheddar, queso, and asadero cheese. I don't know how I'm saying that right. Anyways, so we're going to sprinkle that over the top, just however much. I don't even remember now what the recipe says. Um, I just kind of sprinkle what I think will cover it good. Oh, and your oven should be preheated to 350, which mine is. Then. 
and you're gonna put them in there and bake them for about 20 to 25 minutes until the cheese is good and bubbly and everything. So, we like a lot of cheese. <laughs> So now I'm going to put it in the oven, just kind of wiping that, and let it cook, like I said, 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, y'all, I have two avocados here, and I'm going to kind of make my own little version of guacamole. So for now, I'm just um, mashing these up with a fork. Squeeze it. You can't squeeze it. You ain't got nothing. <laughs> oh, there you go. Come on. Wait, 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 wait. That's I got enough. it. That's enough. We don't need all of it yet. Leave it. It's enough. Oh, no more squeezing out. it. No. No. That's way too much. Don't squeeze it now. We'll put it in something. Okay. I have some onions I diced up. This is some bell, not bell pepper, jalapeno pepper. A little bit of tomatoes, and I hope I did this good enough, but this is some um, cilantro. Courtney's going to put it all in there. If you need a spoon to scrape it in. <clears throat> and hopefully I didn't put too much. I don't think we'll put all the cilantro because my husband's not a big cilantro fan, so we'll start with that to begin with. And I'll use the spoon, kind of stir it up, and we'll see. Sprinkle some in there. Don't go crazy, but we'll, we'll start. Ooh, let's put a little bit more of that in there. Not too much, a little bit. That's enough. I'll taste this one. I think I'll go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and add it for half. And I need. I'm gonna put. Give me the pepper too. We'll put a little bit of pepper. Pepper. Not that. Oh. Pepper, like salt pepper. <laughs> and it's Cinco de Mayo, by the way. So that's why we're making this today. And it's Taco Tuesday on top of it all. What do you think? Mm. Is it good? Does it need some more salt? That's good. I think it might need a little bit more salt. We'll put a little more salt in it. And then I think it's going to be good. Now we're going to just cover this up, put it in the refrigerator for now. Yep. And we're going to, mmm, look pretty good. Mmm. For some entertainment, we're just going to get the this lime. This is her idea. <laughs> she is squirting lime juice in here that she says she's going to drink, so. We'll see. Might not look like it's a lot, though it is. <laughs> This girl's crazy. Hold on. First. All right. Let's see. You're in Mom's the camera. Good. Let's see if she can drink this All lime right. juice. <laughs> it's her idea. Ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one, and. <laughs> Was it sour? That's good. <laughs> She's so silly, y'all. If I could get some more out then, yeah. <laughs> okay, y'all, I almost forgot to tell y'all. I have a can of refried beans in here, and I like to add just a little, like, salsa to the beans when I heat them up. This is just canned refried beans, and I don't know. I just started doing that a while back, and I just, I like it. It kind of helps smooth these out when you're heating them up, and it gives it a little more flavor. So, okay, y'all, I got that out of the oven. Look at it, y'all. Would you just look at it? it looks so Would you look at that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we had leftover chips. I forgot to show you our table. These were from our, the Mexican restaurant we went to the other day. He's wearing my old shorts. Of course, he wears all your old clothes. But anyways, <laughs> Ross has done cleaned his plate. How did you like the enchiladas? I already ate my plate. It was good. He did not want tacos. She wanted tacos, so he was happy with this. Well, I said Courtney, enchiladas, if anything. how did you like it? I want tacos. I don't know what her deal is. She's strange. Tacos are so good. She, I she wanted to buy taco, taco socks today. She, too much taco she loves Taco Bell. Yeah, she's seen like taco what? socks in the store. 
Y'all, I'm almost done with mine. It's still pretty good, though. Okay, honey, what do you think? Was it oh. good? How about eight, my... Eight out of ten. How about my guacamole? Did you like it? Ooh, I did a good job. How about Me? you? I ate it's my plate. Yeah. My plate was the best. Well, good deal. Yeah, the plate nah, was the best. It was really I good, y'all. Very good. Very good. Thank y'all for watching. The Happy Cinco de Mayo. something I found called perfect baked chicken I'm gonna I just cut some chicken up in smaller pieces I'm gonna put a tablespoon of olive oil and then I have some seasoning mix up here I have a teaspoon of garlic powder a teaspoon of onion powder a teaspoon of pepper a teaspoon of salt I put two teaspoons of paprika four teaspoons of brown sugar and I stirred it up so now we're gonna first actually first I'm gonna I know my hands are all in here. I promise I'm going to wash them right away. It's just easier to do it this way. Then we're going to pour all this in there. And this may be, hopefully it's not too much seasoning for the amount of chicken I have because my chicken ended up not being as big as I thought they would be. So anyways, and then I have my oven preheated to 400. So we're going to bake them for about 10 minutes, flip them over, and then bake them for maybe another 10 minutes. We'll just kind of see how they are doing. So... I think that should be good and coated. Yeah, so I'm gonna get that ready. I have my baking sheet. I'm gonna go ahead and spray a little bit of cooking spray on here. And then I'm gonna, and we're gonna lay our chicken on here. deviled eggs and so I've made these before but I thought I'd do it again show y'all how I do it but I have um I made 12 eggs and this recipe is actually for six so I'm going to kind of double everything but I will link the uh, exact recipe down below so I was just trying to break these up a little bit for some reason some are not breaking up as good but okay we're going to start out with I'm going to do four tablespoons of mayonnaise Also, then get me two tablespoons of mustard. Me too. Okay, now we're going to put some sugar in here. Two teaspoons. So I just want one teaspoon because it seems like if I. Two last time was a little bit much, I thought. So I'm just going to put one teaspoon of the vinegar. Careful. Two teaspoons right here. There she's off. Okay. And I'm going to stir this up. I think that's all, right? I'm going to taste it just to make sure that it tastes good. Then we are going to get a plastic a sandwich bag. Sandwich I'm just going to use a Ziploc bag. Actually, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to use a cup. <coughs> I don't remember who I've seen doing this, but we're going to use a cup so that it's easier to get down in there. And we're going to snip a little hole in the corner so Courtney can squeeze it into there. Let's do this. So now we're just going to put the lid on them and put them in Ooh, refrigerator. the refrigerator. See, and I think I left my chicken a little bit too long. I'm hoping that it's not like beef jerky. <laughs> I cut up a big thing of lettuce and we're making macaroni and cheese. So that's going to be supper. Mm -hmm. 